Now, um, people who have a lot of debt, credit card debt, for example, how do you recommend for them to get rid of or to pay off that debt in a manner that is um, efficient and is beneficial to them in a short term time? Yeah, that's a great, yeah, that's question. A great question. I've dealt, I've with, dealt some with some slight credit card debt when I initially graduated, graduated with my undergraduate degree, degree. and also and I, also I had student loans. And so the game, so the game plan, plan that I use and that I always encourage people to do, do is a snowball, snowball method. method. And if you and haven't, if you haven't heard, about heard about that one, initially the way it works is you want to do your minimum payments on everything that you owe. And then the and then smallest, the smallest uh, debt, uh, amount debt amount that you owe, any, any extra, extra funds, funds that you have in that, in that month, month, you want to put all of it all towards it. it. So you start, you with, start the with the smallest amount, amount that, you, that owe, you owe, and then once, and then that, once that one is that paid, one off, paid off, you go, you go to the next, next month. But you must always make your minimum, your minimum payment every month on every debt that you owe so you can keep your credit. Yes, yeah, you, yeah, you definitely don't, don't want to miss any miss payments. payments. Um, that's, um, that's definitely that's a, factor a factor when it comes, when it comes to, to um, how your credit, credit score is calculated. Is calculated. Um, um, so so on-time on -time payments, payments is very, 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 very important. important. Okay. And um, let me ask you about entrepreneurship and the black community. How difficult is it to achieve or to open or to start an enterprise as a person of color? And what are the preparations that you should have to do that? Yeah, so, yeah, initially, so initially to start, to start off, off, people have to understand, have to understand. Sometimes, sometimes people want to go from, from having, having no, no type, type of, business of business to having, to having the biggest, biggest house, house and the nicest, and the nicest car. car. And if you're money you're motivated, motivated in business, business your clientele is going to notice that. that. So anytime, so anytime you're going to look, look to establish, establish a business, business, it has to, it has be, to something be something that you're, that you're already, already passionate, passionate about. about. Now, in, now regards in regards to, to being a legitimate business, business, I always I encourage always business, business owners, owners to start as an LLC. LLC. And that's, and that's, and it's a and single member LLC. And then you can establish that with any state that, state that you live in. in. If you're here in Florida, for, for example, example, you can just go on Sunbiz and register, and register, your, register business. your business. And that'll take, that'll about, take about two or three, two weeks. Or three weeks. And then and once then it's once active, active, you get what's called an EIN, EIN number, 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 IRL. IRL. Now you take you that take EIN number along with your Sunbiz documentation and you open up a business account. So that's, so that's the, the basic, basic steps, steps in establishing, establishing a, business a business and starting it off. And because, and because I have an accounting background, background, I always I encourage people, people to separate, separate their personal, personal funds, funds, funds from their business, their business funds. funds. Okay. So starting so off a business, business initially, initially is nothing, nothing uh, too demanding or too hard. hard. Now, scaling, now, scaling a business, a business that's, that's where you get where into... You get into you know, more and more, more, and more difficult, difficult, especially with people, people you know, you know with our demographics, our demographics because, because there's always, there's always this, sense this sense of, you know, when you see a black person, person in business, in business they, they always think it's somebody trying to take my money, money, money instead of, instead of provide some type of service. service. And what I always, what I always tell, tell people, people doing my business my consulting, the great thing that I learned early on is you understand what business you're in. Funny enough, enough, I had this conversation, conversation with my wife, my wife earlier, earlier today. today. And it's, it's one of those things where, where no matter what business you're in, you're in, we're all in the marketing, marketing business. business. Because you could have the, the best hair salon, salon, you could be the best, be the best tax, tax accountant. accountant, you can have the you best daycare. If you can't market your brand, your business out there, then how can you get a customer? Something I always tell anyone that wants to start off in business, you have to be able to market not only yourself, but also your brand. Thank you, thank you. That's great information. Do you have any questions for Rudolph? Anyone? Come, come, come to the mic. Because he won't hear you. Hey, 
Hey, Rudolph. <laughs> All right, my question is regards to the credit card. Do I need to look this way? Okay, the credit card and your kids. Um, when you said authorized and non-authorized, I think, well, how do you determine or how do you keep a limit so that they don't go over with the credit card? And the great thing about adding somebody as an authorized user is that because you're adding them yourself, the card comes to you. So in regards to controlling their spending, once you add them as an authorized user, you call the 800 number, you can limit how much they have access to based on the available credit that you have. Available credit. What if you want to keep them less than that? You would authorize that accordingly. So let's just say the limit on your credit card was like $10,000. And then you call the 800 number and you said, this authorized user that I just added, they're only going to have access to $1,000. They won't be able to go above that spend. Oh, another question. What banks, if you know, provide this secured card that you're talking about? Well, all banks have them. Um, you always want to do your due diligence on what banks you want to um, work with. I always encourage people, whatever bank you have now, talk to a banker and get the initial secure card. Now, secure card, again, that's for those that don't have established credit and are looking to grow their credit score. So Rudolph, if someone needs to get in contact with you, how do they get in contact with you? Yeah, so I actually give you my personal cell phone number, which is 617-513-9699. So we can always initially start there. And then any questions that anybody has in regards to business, taxes, um, business funding, credit and yeah, we're actually going to be launching a uh, bookkeeping uh business here in um 2024 so we're excited about that repeat them now for him to re-answer them oh she had asked about um, authorized users. I haven't asked anything yet. Oh, no. Okay, so Rudolph, your number is 617-513-9699, and people can call you regarding all things business. They can. Thank you very much for coming on and for giving us your time. We appreciate you. And we'll certainly get in touch with you. You have a good night. Okay, thank you. Hopefully next time I'll see you guys in person. Go ahead. So we have a tendency to think that prosperity is not for the Christian. And I know that is something that you talk about a lot. So what does the Bible say about riches related to a Christian? Yeah, so it's one of those things where, unfortunately, in the Christian-based church, we have this um, bad notion of making more money is a bad thing. And it's really not. And um, I won't take too much time on this, but just even putting it on my personal life, obviously, we can always give more back to the church. But for me, I've been the last two years coaching basketball and then the last year i've actually been coaching inner city basketball with um you know essentially lower demographic kids and when i first got there these kids had no basketballs they had no practice jersey and then the jersey that they played their games in was terrible and i always tell my wife i said i'm fortunate enough to have you know, some extra resources to donate to them and be a part of them. 
practice jerseys. I recently just bought um, jerseys for the team as well. And these things are costly. And, you know, if I was in a financial situation that I was in, I wouldn't be able to do that. We've also had these kids over our house um, for pregame dinner. And we've just recently started a travel basketball team. And my wife's business and my business um, been able to sponsor them. And unfortunate that even when I'm going out and I'm looking for other businesses to sponsor, I can't even tap into it. And imagine if we have those resources initially to impact those kids. I understand that, you know, especially as the community, we're trying to save the kids that are in our church. What about the kids that our kids go to school? And if we can just get in contact with them, whether it's through sports or something that they have interest in, we have those resources to provide that. It allows us now open up their mind and their heart to now preach the gospel to them. So I always encourage people, especially seven day Adventists, that this notion of growth and prosperity and making more money, it's not a negative thing. It's what we do with those resources to impact people is the most important thing that we can't lose. And the one phrase I love um, by gentleman follow my golden is um he always says business is a good idea because business is a god idea all right business is a good idea because business is a god idea amen well thanks rudy thank you so much for your participation we look forward to many more collaborations with you Sounds good. All right, thank you. All right, let's continue now with Galliani and continue on our insurance tip. We are going to talk about living benefits on an insurance uh, policy. So, Galli, will you explain to us what are living benefits on an insurance policy? I am so glad now to see so many young people in this room. And uh, in the past, people won't buy life insurance because they said, I'm going to buy life insurance. I'm not going to use the money. I'm going to pay for a life insurance. And when I die, the money will go to someone else. Yes or no? Talking to a teacher, we have to know. Yeah. Huh? People say that all the time. That's why I don't buy life insurance. Now, you have been around like close to 15 years. You buy life insurance and you don't need to die to use the money. You heard about that? Life insurance, you can use when you're alive. You don't need to die. You get a stroke a heart attack, a cancer, a critical illness. An accident. Accident. Critical, chronic illness, and they give you... Alzheimer's. Alzheimer, you give you your money. I had a friend, she had a policy with me, she was 26. And she got five hundred thousand dollars and she was paying around thirty dollars for it and she called me in the afternoon she said i have a really bad news for you i said what happened she said come over it was a stage four breast cancer 26 the company give her $250,000 on spot, less than a week. She can use that money. That's what life insurance with living benefits is now. And uh, from 18, for the young ladies, 18, close to 30. 
If you have your kids with good health, $500,000 is for only $26. Less than a breakfast. $500,000 for your son who is 18 for $40. Accident is like every day. Cancer is our enemy right now. Stroke, heart attack, we don't know. Every single person should be covered by like $500,000. Is it term policy? Of course, is it term policy? My daughter, she is 80, when she was 18, if something happened to her and she become critical, the company, Dominic, you know how much they will give from me for her a month? Close to $4,000 every month. $4,000 from the $500,000 every month. Mm -hmm. We don't buy life insurance no more because we're going to die. We do life insurance for living mm -hmm. benefits. And, and you have some experiences of people who bought life insurance and within a few months died. All the time. For I've been in the business for 15 years. I have stories. I don't have time to say that. It's like every day. During COVID, people calling you like crazy. My mom is at the hospital. They are going to unplug her. Please check for me. People were dying. And we had some claims, serious claims, like every single day. And because my, I have license in other states, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, at COVID time, and that changed my personal life. Life insurance is no longer for us for money. It's a mission. It's a mission. How come you have, you have a job and you are not covered with life insurance? Even for $100,000. $100,000 is like $16 for your daughter. $200 a, $200 a year for a 25-year-old for $100,000. It's a $16. And we have experience. We have a lot. People sitting down with us and don't get the policy. Oh, I thought I did it. But can you check for me if mommy did it? No, she did that. Mm. So cancer, heart attack, that's what happening right there. Accident. Accident. Just imagine. I don't know where people get that. This go food me thing. <laughs> you have your 16, 17, or 25, just graduate college, get into a car accident, and you go on Facebook doing a go food me for twelve, fifteen, twenty dollars, twenty thousand dollars to bury your loved one? I don't know. I am a little hard <laughs> on those things. Yeah. Because of my background. I'm a teacher. I expect when I when I'm doing something for someone, you understand is that the money behind it? Is that that? And your family, your friends, they have to understand the importance of life insurance right now. How many people who have life insurance? Statistics said less than 40%. Less than 40%. And agents are everywhere talking to you. Oh, say, okay, I will call you back. Let me get a quote. I will call you back. And never call back. Until, boom, you go to the hospital. And then it's too late. Because now once you get, once you get diabetes and you have to take insulin, insulin you are almost uninsurable or it's going to cost you so much money, you can't afford it. And after COVID, there are some restrictions now. 
The companies cannot take sense anymore because it's true. Right. So we always recommend that when you are young and healthy and strong mm -hmm. and have no chronic illness, that is the time to get a life insurance policy. Because as you get older and your body starts breaking down, then it becomes more risky for the company and more expensive for you to be covered. When you get a term policy, you have to pay the same amount for the 20 or 30 years. That, that, that amount never changes. That's a term insurance policy. So let's say you get a $500,000 policy for $20 a month. That $20 will continue until you are, in, uh, until the 30 years of the policy are over. And you have the opportunity before the expiration of the term policy to transfer it, convert it to a permanent policy that will carry you until you're 95 years old. And you will not need to have a medical examination for that. So it's beneficial for us to plan early and to plan right and not to exclude the children. How many children have we lost in the past few years? Mm -hmm. Unexpectedly healthy, strong, young children, and young many, people. How many, don't forget about the, uh, the young kids drawing from the poor. Yes, now it's drowning, yes. And now you summertime. teachers, you know what I'm talking about, with every year when you come back, Somebody's there was a missing. student he did missing. Over the summer, something happened. Yeah. Life insurance yes. is for everyone. Everyone. And life insurance begins at the age of 14 days. So grandparents, parents, think about this and plan for life because you never know what will happen. Do you have any questions for us? Yeah. For sure. Because we have people online, you must come to the mic. Living benefits. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Living benefits. Oh, oh, Joshua, do you have a, a, a ambulant mic that they can use? Okay, Joshua is going to give you a mic. And the budget we're talking before. Life insurance should be in the budget as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Okay. I thank you for explaining that because I don't have life insurance because I thought it's only for when you're dead. Aww. And if you're single, don't have kids, <laughs> I don't see the need to get life insurance. So I now that I know I can use it while I'm living, yes. for critical condition, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, and because of that, I'm going to give you this. Okay. Uh, come get that. That's for you. The living benefits. Okay, thank oh, you. yes, that was actually my question. So is there a difference for living versus dead with the life insurance? Is the, you get both. If you get sick, you get the money. You die, your family get the money. Okay. So you have to sign up for both. That's what you're saying. No, no, just the same policy. You get the both in it. If you get sick, mm -hmm. like critical, you will get all the sickness recovered in this booklet, and we have more. So some people, if, don't, if they need, can get some more booklet. Yeah. It, and you, they give the money to you while you are sick. But if you never get sick, when you die, the money will go to your beneficiaries. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a way, because when you say beneficiaries, as in we can say who those beneficiaries are, they yes. don't have to necessarily yes. be a relative? Mm -hmm. no. Okay. You, you, anyone you choose can be your beneficiary. Okay. And you can change too. You can, you can put a beneficiary now. If you want to change it in the future, you can change the name. I'm sorry, say that again? It, you can put some names now for your beneficiaries, but you can change the beneficiaries in the future if you want to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. For now, Any, that's my question. Awesome. Any other questions about life insurance? Okay. I, I want the young people on the back. In the I want to hear from you. What do you think about life insurance? 
I'm going to tell you why I ask this question. Yeah, yeah, this table right there. Yes, I will. Give them the mic. Yeah. No, you, 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 you. Yes, uh-huh. Do you have yeah. life insurance? <laughs> You're not young? Do you have life insurance? Um, you have a child? Life insurance is my job. What about your, what about your, your child? Okay. You have let, life insurance with your dad? Let, no, with but job. job. Let's talk about job. life insurance with the job. <laughs> Life insurance with the job is only while you're employed at the job. Uh -huh. Once you leave the job, you don't have life insurance. And life insurance with the job is a group life insurance. The policy does not belong to you. You don't have it. <laughs> it belongs to the job. To the company. Because the, what, the only way the policy belongs to you is when you have life insurance, they send you a certificate of insurance. You own that policy. The policy that you have with the job, the job owns the policy. It's not your policy. They will give the little money that they tell you they insure you for. Usually it's about $25,000, not more than that. Depend. And that's all they'll give to your family. But you are not really insured. So don't count on your job, life insurance, group insurance policy as if it is a real life insurance for you. And also we call them board paid life insurance. When you are not on the board anymore, most of the time you're not covered. That's right. And also what I want to add regarding the, the retirement, if you have a, a saving, a retirement saving plan annuity to your job, please, 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 I'm begging you, feed your 401k feed your saving to your job don't say i am too young i'm too young you know what i don't need money now guess what i sat down with young people leaving their job at 20 something with like close to fifty thousand dollars saved because they are serious and there is another thing that happened to me <laughs> when i came here from haiti and I got a job with the school board in Broward. I didn't know better. I dress, I, you know, the way they dress, I like to say sign here, initial here, sign here, initial here. I didn't know. But I didn't know how to choose a real fault would be for you at the school. I didn't know. And when I passed my life insurance, I passed like eight years in Broward, eight to nine years in Broward, Lucky me, I didn't even know for the vested thing. And I was vested when I left. I didn't know. But when you don't know, you ask questions. But sometimes we don't know, we don't ask questions. And you see people working at Publix or Target or Walmart, getting out of Walmart with 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars, and you have been at Walmart at the same time. Why? Because, and the forward will be, they say, give me the maximum. Since you don't know, you don't ask, they give you the minimum. minimum. Yeah. The minimum can be from 1% of your paycheck to 10%. When you don't know, they give you one. They give you one. And the person who know at 25, at 26, they start with 10%. By the time for them to retire, they have a good $200,000, $200,000 in the 401k. And you, oh, no, you know what? I didn't know, but ask question. When you see people coming to your school, when you see people form your job, sitting down at the table, go take a little time to ask question, period. Ask. And you have a homework. The teacher will not go out giving you homework. If you work, you have a job. By Monday, you call the HR. When I get to the job, I didn't know. But I went to a seminar on Saturday afternoon. And now I want to know, do you work 401k for me? If I do a career with you after 30 years, what will I will get when I'm leaving you? You have to ask those questions. And check your financial portfolio 
So what happened to your grandma or your mom will not happen to you? Very good. Question, Faith. Hi, I actually have two questions. So um, I'm very new to the job market um, and also insurance. I've never taken out insurance on anything before. So I have, um, my question is what happens when you're unemployed? So um, for instance, let's say you're suddenly let go from your job. What happens to your um, life insurance? Like how do you can, your life insurance policy? like? How does that work? So my, my recommendation to my clients is do an annual payment. So for somebody your age, it could be somewhere between two to $300 a year. Mm -hmm. So you do the annual payment and forget about it for 12 months. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So whatever happens in between, you never lapse your policy because it's already paid for the mm -hmm. year. Okay. And also use your tax money. I did that with my clients. Mm -hmm. When you do your taxes, you know, don't spend the taxes, money, you know, pay it on the year. Awesome. Um, my, thank you so much. My second question is, what if your job, so you were talking about 401ks um, just now, and I'm interested in those. I know that's not a life insurance question, but what if your job doesn't offer benefits like that? How do you get that? We can help you. We have a plan. The name is different. They call it individual retirement account that's your personal thing you can open one and they take the money from your bank account and it is flexible you can start it with twenty five dollars fifty dollars one hundred dollars if you are not working you call the company they stop it when you get another job you can increase you can decrease you can do whatever you want to it it's an ira yeah and it is good to start it early please do it for your kids early mm -hmm. and when they get the, the the dream job after college and then you just give it to them I open that for you you are three months or two years old and now you have your career job please now fit it and you give it to him or her thank you so much you're welcome any other questions about insurance we had mentioned during the month of may about designated health care surrogate do you remember what this is for so everyone who goes to the hospital they're going to ask you when you get there do you have a designated health care surrogate it is a form that informs your health care givers of who can speak on your behalf if you're not able to speak for yourself. And it is important whether you are young or you're old, mm -hmm. as long as you're 18 years old and up, you should have one of those. I have some blanks on the corner of the table there that you can pick up and fill out. They have to be notarized and they have to be you can either keep them with you when you go to the doctor and give a copy to your primary care physician so he knows what you want mm -hmm. or you can give it to a trusted individual in your family and if something happens to you they can bring it to the hospital so i have some blanks there for you to use it's the designated health care so again it's two forms together the other one is the living will and the living will is the document that says what you want to happen to you. So the healthcare surrogate designates the person that you want to speak on your behalf. The living will tells what you want to be done on your behalf. So if you cannot talk, if you are on the feeding tube, if you are brain dead and have no chance of recovery, if you're in a coma, all of these things are on this form and you decide how you want yourself to be handled before you are in a situation where you cannot say. Mm -hmm. So these are important forms. Again, they're on the table and you're welcome to take them with you to fill them out. And if you have questions, I'll be happy to help you um,
fill them out. And also, I have, and I can make copies for you, I have made copies, I have printed um, sample budgets, um, budget form, money cash flow, money cash plan, um, debt snowball form, I have the blanks here. And if you are interested, we can make you copies so you can go home tonight and start making a budget. Every month you should sit down and figure out how much you're gonna get, how much you're gonna spend, how much you're gonna save, how much you're gonna give. And these forms that I, I have here, I like them because they have giving as the first um, allocation. So um, the principle is you give, you save, you spend. So the first person you give to is God, then you have to give to yourself. Yeah. You must pay yourself. If you're working, you must pay yourself. Every month, you have, that's your savings. When you pay yourself, you save money. You must pay yourself. And that's part of your budget. Your insurance is part of your budget. Your expenses are part of your budget. The supplemental retirement account is part of your budget. Even you have 401k to your job, if you still want to save $50 on the side, you have to do it. It's what we call pay yourself first. Yes. Yeah. The $50, you won't die. You will spend it anyway, but save it for yourself. We don't say big. I say $50 a month. $100 is like $25 a week. You, yes. are, you, are, you will be surprised. Remember that retirement, when you're retiring, ideally, it's a three-legged stool. It has your Social Security, it has your pension, and it has your savings. So people who don't work for the government or for the school board don't necessarily get a pension anymore. Mm -hmm. So now that leaves you with a two-legged stool. It's your savings and social security. And if you haven't saved, it leaves you with one-third possibly of your income to live on. And that is very difficult to do. So you have to take care of the three legs of the stool in order to have a whole retirement when you retire. Well balanced. Well, well balanced. And for teachers, you only get, what, 38% oh, of your paycheck as your pension after 30 years. Yeah, yeah. And for the teachers, you know, there are some new law laws just going to be in effect July 1st. Mr. The Governor signed them. Bring the mic up. Hi. Yeah, signed them this week. And then if you need more information, you can contact us and we can help out on that. In Miami? You work in Miami Day for Miami Day? Yeah. Oh, Miami Union. Oh, private school. Okay, I know, I know. The both of you? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, always ask. You work for any institution, you already get the job. Get the days off. Sit down. I say, when I get to the job, I didn't know. Now I want to know. What's your plan for me? I'm going to have a career with you after 30 years. What is your plan for me? You have to ask that. You have to ask. Yeah. And yeah. if you work for the government, take the time to go to your benefits department and find out what they are All offering that. you. You got to know. And if you are on FRS, if you are on FRS, please remember, I have spoken to a lot of people who think that the options that FRS offers them are the best. But listen to me. FRS, the Florida Retirement System, if you take option one when you retire, they give you, they'll give you the maximum money a month, but as soon as you die, 
it stops. Get check stop. So if you work 45 years for Dade County and you take your FRS option one, you get two checks and then you die the third month, all the money that you've accumulated and your pension stays for, FRS. Your family doesn't get it. That's how the system is set up. And Dominic, what we can ask, if they need more information, and if you know anyone working for the school system, uh, for example, we went to the, we went to several school in, in Miami, but they give us a warm, only the teachers get access to us. Only the administrators get access to us most of the time. Most of the time. The cafeteria workers, they don't. They don't. The bus drivers, the, bus drivers, the security, the guard people, not all the time they have time when we are there. They don't have a lot of time to come to see us. The teachers got a break. They have a time. They can set it up. And uh, we want to reach everyone. We want to talk to everyone. Yes. Please let us know. And I don't know if you have Asian here. Tell them we have people who have uh, approved contract with the system. We can talk to them in Creole. And we have Spanish people who can speak in Spanish. Sometimes they get their job because the communication, you know, and they don't ask. And then it is for everyone. You know. Yes, ma'am. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let the mic come to you because we're online too. I want to go back to something you were saying about um, um, instruments or policies that are used in the hospital. One was the living will, I think you said, and the other one was the surrogate. I wanted to know if a POA overrides those. Power of yes. attorney. Yes. Your power of attorney gives limited or unlimited control to the person that you have chosen on the power of attorney. So the power of attorney would override because the person, the power of attorney makes the person speak for you. Right. So it's either it overrides it or it's concurrent depending on how it is worded. Okay. Thank you. But you should consult an attorney to get that information. Okay, uh, any other questions? All right, um, so we are going to stop here. The tables are there, we have information for you. We want to welcome New York Life over here. They also have information for you. So please get all the information you need and remember if you have a 1099 and you work for yourself and you pay your own taxes, make sure you pay those taxes because otherwise, when it's time to retire, you will not get any money in Social Security. I have a lady right now who's in the 70s, who's been a CNA all her life, made good money, drives a Mercedes Benz, and she can't retire because she doesn't have any savings. She doesn't have any um, Social Security money because she never declared the money that she made in the Social Security. And also, we have a form call a uh, free retirement analysis is at the table also as well you can fill it and give it to Dominic if you want a free retirement analysis we can do it for you uh, I'm gonna ask Pastor Dutton to come and close us in prayer um, this session in prayer thank you Pastor Good afternoon, everyone. Well, thank you all so much. This is a great presentation, and I learned a whole lot. Thank uh, you. Thank you for having us. And now that means that many of us have got to sign up tonight. <laughs> um, there are some watching online. There are a few watching online for sure. And um, I really do hope that we take note um, in terms of our finances, because this is vital. Um, I shared this morning as a joke that we should live, uh, give our children a will mm -hmm. and not a won't. 
And I pray that uh, as we hear this, that we will actually uh, take note of it and sign up um, because this is the key to financial success and freedom, especially not even for us, but for our future generations. Exactly. So I thank you so much. Let's have a word of prayer as we close out this evening. Father, we just want to thank you again for these presentations and, and for what we have learned. Father, may we put it into practice. And we ask, oh God, that those who may watch this program uh, later on, that they too will want to know how they can sign these documents to be able to, to help their families uh, into the future. We thank you, oh God, for all that you have done this evening and for providing uh, the means and the individuals who are willing to share their, their knowledge and their expertise. And Lord, as we depart from here, guide us, protect us, and be with us on these busy roadways. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.